Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth. Thank you for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Bob Coldine. Straight ahead on this edition, one month left in the fiscal year, the legislature wrangles with budget issues. Also tonight, new e-gaming taxation is like a silver dollar. It's got two sides. And a downhill driver with failing brakes takes matters into his own hands. In sports, which would you rather have, a pickle or a motorcycle? Stay with us. We'll have these stories and more next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skip Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skip Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Good day, Tarawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, September the 1st, the last month of the fiscal year. The legislature continues to shape the FY 2022 budget. We're going to get a progress report. Appropriation bills originate in the House of Representatives, which passed its version of the 2022 budget. After some Senate amendments, Speaker Edmund Villagomez says the bill's heading to conference committee. Yesterday we had a session. Um, we did entertain the uh, Senate uh, version, uh, the amendments they made to the budget, and we rejected it. Uh, everyone present voted in favor of the rejection with the exception of uh, one. One of the bones of contention, hospital funding. House Ways and Means uh, added over two million dollars, about maybe 2.6, 2.8, to the hospital, which the Senate uh, took out and, uh, you know, spread it out to other activities, which included the uh, scholarship office as well, but uh, it went to other things. Another issue, executive branch salaries. The amendments uh, by the Senate included, and I think the administration, you know, it's, it's, it's worth looking into going over the, uh, the, the salary caps and, you know, the pay raises. Both the House and Senate have selected their conference committee members and are ready to proceed now. Despite the loss of its major industry, tourism, the CNMI economy has been able to keep its head above water thanks to federal assistance, which is separate from the local budget. With the money coming in from the federal side, it's everything that's coming in is to help stimulate the economy. Everything from the PEBT to the, uh, you know, the stimulus card that's going 
it's all to stimulate uh, the economy. And I think that's where the, uh, the revenue is coming in from, uh, on top of the other, uh, like the child tax and everything else. And the speaker looks forward to even more in the future. There is more coming. Um, you know, and the administration is also making efforts to still keep an eye on the tourism industry to try to get it to rebound and, you know, because uh, the funds coming in, like ARPA, for example, there's a time limit to it. So I think we're looking at maybe late 2023 or early 2024 before, you know, that's the cutoff and we need to, we need to spend this money. In the meantime, the speaker offers advice to the private sector. It's also like a good time where, yes, things are down, but, uh, you know, this gives uh, those that are stakeholders in the industry f uh, for tourism, for example, you know, to kind of reset, you know, revamp, renovate, whatever needs to be done um, so that when or if we open up our borders, uh, you know, a little bit more for visitors to come in, um, you know, we'll, we'll be ready to receive them. Speaking of budget, one component of the local economy is the center of a controversy. We hear from both sides. Legislation doubled the taxes on e-gaming machines. Gaming Committee Chairman Ed Propes. One of the things that we based it on was the fact that if you pass by and see the parking lot at Club 88 in Saipan, Vegas, how packed it was. And also the talk of the town. Also talking with some, some people that work at revenue at Department of Revenue and Tax about how, yeah, they are making money. Uh, and yes, they do pay their taxes. Work. That's great. But if they are booming because money's coming in and people have that extra uh, money to spend over there, and then great for them. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we'd like to know if, if they really are truly, as they say, that they're going to shut down. Um, we have our fiscal analysts and we, we could certainly meet and, and look at their books and see just how much they're hurting. Gaming consultant Gus Noble responds. Let me say I apologise to any member of the local delegation if we have offended them by our campaign. We just believe that we have a right to be heard um, and we've got legitimate concerns um, and we wanted to be able to sit down with them and express those legitimate concerns and we understand that a local tax is going to be introduced. I mean, that's inevitable. Um, and we understand it's for very good purposes, such as the college fund. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're not fighting that, but doubling a tax without talking to the stakeholder, uh, we just, that's, that's not right. We publish all our, our meetings. Every session that we've ever had is published. We go through the Open Government Act. It's mm -hmm. well known. We send it to the media. We send it out to the public. We post it on Facebook. We put the bills out. I, I don't know what more we, we can do. We attend all the House of Representatives gaming committee meetings and monitor those closely. And this bill didn't go to the House Gaming Committee. Uh, I'm not sure why. And um, there was some notification, but it was done on the uh, bulletin boards and via the website. And we don't monitor the local delegation bulletin boards and websites. Probably our fault, but we certainly had no notification of the bill. And the bill did sit for quite a period of time and then passed quite quickly within a five-day period. One unexpected development, the closure of the golf course. I think it's very sad. I think that, uh, that I believe that was the first thing they shut down. And what does that have to do with, with their actual e-gaming? So it was impacting us immediately and we had to make the golf course had always been, you know, we'd always sub subsidized that and it lost money. So we said, look, we can't afford to keep subsidizing it with this massive increase in tax. So we made the very difficult decision. It's the first golf course in Saipan. Uh, we made a very difficult decision to, that we had to close it. One thing for sure, they're not on the same page now. Uh, one of the things, uh, it was in the uh, August 18th newspaper uh, of the Variety Headline News that Club 88 is shutting down effective immediately. And as it turned out, they never shut down. So it was one of many uh, what appear to be lies that we are we were being told that to, to try to strong arm us into repealing this 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 
bill that became a law that increased their fees. And most importantly, our 70 local employees that totally depend on our businesses. We're in a pandemic, there are no other jobs around. If we lay them off, they're going to have, you know, more than likely, they're either the main breadwinner or they're the ones, their salary is the one that pays the rent or their salary is the one that pays the food. Shortly before noon, a dump truck traveling down Isla Drive from Capitol Hill overturned. The driver, working for GPPC, escaped unheard after his dump truck flipped with a full load of dirt. Apparently, his brakes failed as he was going downhill. The driver blared his horn as he descended to warn other cars. Unable to stop, he veered off the pavement to the right, where the truck tipped on its side, spilling the contents on the side of the road. Not on the road, thanks to a heads-up maneuver by the driver who successfully avoided other vehicles. No other vehicles involved in the accident. Lunchtime traffic was snarled briefly due to rubbernecking, but quickly cleared. Applications for nominations to the U.S. Military Service Academies are now being accepted. Interested students have between now and December the 10th to submit their application to Congressman Greg Kalili Sablon's office. Four of the five service academies require a nomination from a congressman. Sablon succeeded in passing legislation that reserves seven slots for NMI students, three for Army at West Point, two for Navy at Annapolis, one for the Air Force Academy in Colorado, and one in the Merchant Marine Academy in New York. The Coast Guard does not reserve or require Congress congressional approval. Contact Congressman Khalili's office for complete application information. The latest NMI student in a military academy is Jinju Thompson, who's enrolled as a freshman in the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs this fall. All right, coming up, we've got a pretty hot story. Pretty hot. Pretty pika. COVID vaccine. How about you? I'm COVID-19. I'm COVID-19. COVID-19. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now. Just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. All right. Welcome back to the midweek edition of the KSPN2 News. Guam could be getting a new hospital. For that story, we're we turn to Isaiah Ogan and Nestor Lacanto and the KUM News Team. 
Hafede CNMI, Guahu C. Isaiah Uggen, and here's what's making news on Guam. $345 million in federal funding may be available for a new Guam hospital. It's part of a nearly $1 billion proposed appropriation for territorial medical facilities under consideration by Congress. Delegate Michael St. Nicholas says if approved, the governor should then spend the $300 million she's been holding back in American Rescue Plan money on pandemic assistance for the needy. KUAM's Nestor Laconto reports. Program, Congressman Sir Nicholas says the Natural Resources Committee will consider a $345 million appropriation for a Guam medical facility during a markup hearing this week. If approved, it'll be part of a massive $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation package Congress is now considering. So as far as probabilities of us getting this passed, I can't guarantee it, but I can say that we're definitely in a much better place this year than we were last year. He also questioned why the governor is locking up $300 million in pandemic assistance money for her hospital complex. He says it's not even clear that she can use it for that. To take $300 million in relief money that was intended for relief at a time when we have immediate relief needs on the horizon and to park that and put that away for something that's going to have a five to seven year timeline um, yeah, we really shouldn't do that. He also criticized the FY22 budget bill for tying up $35 million a year in EITC reimbursements to pay for the proposed project. He says that's tying up too much too soon. I'm actually very suspicious as to why there's such an interest in trying to tie up the funding when we don't even know exactly what that funding is going to be tied up for. And again, I mentioned earlier the timelines. We're looking at a five to seven year project timeline. It's not likely the governor would even consider releasing her 300 million in ARP money without a guarantee of getting the 345 million. But midway through the San Nicolas press conference, Adeloupe issued a news release in which the governor credits Natural Resources Chairman Raul Grijalva of Arizona, whom she met with in July for pledging his help to fund the Guam hospital. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that press release is. It does underscore that the question Governor, if that money, if you already knew that money was going to be committed, why are you still holding your 300 million back? The Natural Resources Committee markup meeting is set for September 2nd in Washington. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. The CDC has upgraded Guam in its travel advisories, and that's not a good thing. Guam is now level four. Under the designation, the CDC advises people to avoid travel here because the risk of COVID is very high. The CDC advises that if you plan on traveling to Guam, make sure you are fully vaccinated before travel. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUAM.com or downloading the KUAM News app, available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Wahoo see Isaiah Ogden. Thank you, Isaiah. Saturday night was all right for a Cadon Pica challenge at the Taste of Mariana's. Seven brave souls and sturdy stomachs enjoyed, or should I say, endured peppers near the top of the Scoville scale. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to give a taste of the island of Saipan, a taste of Tinian, and a taste of the island of Rhoda. We had the Escabete cooking contest, and that would be the taste of Saipan, the Bonelos Kamuti eating contest from the island of Rhoda, the Kadupika uh, cooking contest, which is a taste of Tinian. thing about this kind of pika contest after the judges are done judging and tasting we can all even you 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 that's right you you come on get out that tv seat We had seven contestants and they all gave their love, their passion to the taste of Marianas. So smoked out, this is smoked out zone, they were first place. I put some lemongrass in there, I put uh, of course hot pepper, we put our own hot pepper in there that we made. Uh, we uh, put a little bit of beer, put a little bit of Bud Light in there, a little bit of coconut milk. And uh, we didn't really try to make it too hot, you know, we tried to make it a little bit more flavor. Chef Dan, what did you put in there? 
Ja, ik ga zo een beetje in de bonus. Maar je hebt hier de kruidig, kinder, demonbaas, onion, hot pepper. En de isopapers. I'll tell you all the secret ingredients. There's a lot of love put in that one. Uh, little lemongrass, no green onion, just the basic. Uh, pepper, hot pepper, lots of black pepper. All right, smoke down, smoke down. What? Over here, my friend. My protectors is gonna feed that. Okay, what you put in there? Well, I'm gonna try to go past this ultra way of uh, how to pretty much cook up the pizza. So. We had a uh, coconut rice, often with uh, our old passion, bakram pizza, a lot of chives, garlic, onion. Of course, the coloring for the turmeric and the tofu. So, uh, also, uh, what do you know? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, smoked out. But one thing's for sure, number one ingredient that's not a secret for all the contestants, a lot of love in the cooking. We're gonna do this. Uh, this is the number one smoked out there. There's it to my left. And I don't lie, this is really good. I eat on the radio. <laughs> so it's really tasty. The criteria was based on plating, presentation, taste, and cleanliness. So this was number one. Way to go. Congratulations. You're better than I am. All right, coming up, many people do not associate Capitol Hill with nightlife, but KSPN2 Sports does, and that's our story. Nightlife on Capitol Hill, minus the bright lights. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. I got my COVID-19 vaccine. How about you? I come long or so with COVID-19. I'm long or so. Instead of actually is COVID-19 vaccines are good. I did it for my kids. I did it for my friends. I did it for my family. I did it for you. I did it. Let's do it. Do it for us. Let's do it together. Labor Day, a time to celebrate and pay tribute to the contributions of each and every working individual in the CNMI and nationwide. Stay safe this Labor Day weekend. Don't drink and drive, and always designate a sober driver. Drink responsibly, so we can celebrate you once more at next year's Labor Day picnic. Happy Labor Day, CNMI. We appreciate your service. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle.
Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. Buenos sports fans, Capitol Hill ball field swings back into action with games every night this week. You know, KSPN2 Sports loves winners, but we love the losers bracket too. Ladies and gentlemen, for putting a wonderful show. Grab a chair and a jacket. It's cool there at night. Oops, there it is, the dreaded losers bracket. Loser, leave town. Put up or shut up. Move up or move out. You get the message. The dreaded losers bracket where teams face elimination. Win or go home and don't come back. Since all that players hit the third home run, they have another home run. Tindin's grand slam wasn't enough to keep Oleg Prim from losing to a side 26 to 11. So that, that grand slam, you guys were down. Yeah, we were. But your hearts were still in it, and you went up there, and you knew the bases were loaded. What were you feeling? Man, I was. I just wanted to whack that ball out there, yeah. You yeah. did? Yes. Did you know it was gone when you hit it? Oh, yeah. You, you saw it. You saw that. I saw, well, every, <laughs> yeah, you saw Everybody's going to see it because I got <laughs> yeah. it on video. But you lost the game. Yes, we did. I so how is it? Your heart broken? Or? No, no, no. Actually, that was my former team, so we're good. Let's get a team photo, even if it's kind of dark. That's because the lights at home plate are burned out. Who cares? Look at Jeff. See how happy he is? Well, he's not happy about this. Callie with the liner down the right field line. A two-run triple in the first inning for Saipal over Wickham Wicked. Oh, and a play at home. Not inside. Hey, you don't have to hit it that far, really, in this game. Everybody oh, oh, oh. Told you it was good. <laughs> this was a seesaw, a nail biter, a back and forth. So close. Wekamo Ked walks off with the 9 8 win as they stay alive in the King of Diamond softball tournament. When I was a kid, we played a game called Pickle, where we practice getting caught in a rundown and you know, all that was needed were three kids and a ball. Nowadays pickleball has a, another meaning. Saturday morning at the Latter-day Saints Church parking lot players of all ages and abilities gather for pickleball. Nikki Nichols, an avid tennis player his whole life, has taken up this sport with a passion. Oh good action back here Nikki. what's going on? Pickleball. Sure. What is pickleball? Yeah I don't see any pickles. No, no, no pickles. It was named after a dog named Pickle, who kept chasing after the balls. So the guys set it up in their backyard in Seattle, family picnics. What are we going to do for our kids to, you know, while the time away? They invented this game, and their dog kept chasing it. The dog's name was Pickle, so they called it Pickleball. It's very similar to tennis and ping pong. Like you, you have love? No, we don't say love. But no you, no like, love in pickleball. Well, there's a lot of love. It's, it's the friendliest game I've ever played. I mean, sport. And everybody's really nice. What a marathon. <laughs> Vicious. You play to 11, you have to win by two. You, only, you can only win a point if you're serving. Now, each side, each person will serve until they lose the point or rally. And then the other partner on that side serves. You have to serve diagonally into the box, just like tennis. Okay. The difference between the tennis and stuff is, uh, well, not totally different, but the ball has to bounce once on each side before you can hit it in the air, or on that side. A term that's unique to pickleball, the kitchen. Now here's the real crucial difference. There's a kitchen. And kitchen? Yeah, there's, there's up in front of the box, you'll see two um, vertical, horizontal white lines. Right. So you cannot volley or smash if you're in the kitchen. Like tennis, you can go right up to the net and smash it. You can't do that. You'll call, you'll, if you do, it's called a Marivik. After a game is finished, 
this. Nice playing you. That was so fun. Thank you. Nice job, partner. All right, you guys. Hey. Yeah. Hey, a lucky cloud. Nikki leaves Saipan tomorrow for the New Mexico State Championships. So I'm going to represent Saipan. <laughs> All right, good luck. Are you going to wear a CNMI flag or jersey or something? Um, uh, we've, we are designing a shirt and logo right now. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at marianastrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at marianastrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. Enjoy September with our Smoothie of the Month, specially priced at $5.50. Blueberry meets mango and the results are healthy and delicious. Bananas and strawberries are also joining the party along with cinnamon and granola. It's the Smoothie of the Month at Gold Gym, specially priced at $5.50. Fast food that's good for you too. Gold's Gym, you're a fan. Our weather report was a high of 88, a low of 77, humidity 80%. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, isolated showers. You've heard it before. Winds 10 to 15 out of the east. High 88, low 78, seas 2 to 4 feet. Sunrise, 4 past 6, a low tide in the morning, 10.38. High tide at 3.30, sunset at 6.28. Keeps getting earlier. What can we do about it? Nothing. Enjoy it. That is your new sports and weather on this midweek edition. Thank you for watching. See you back here on Friday. Good night.